episode, I'm delighted to be joined by Anthony Oliver Fernandez, uh, AVP of Revenue Optimization and Network Planning at Jazeera Airlines. Today, we will discuss the factors that have contributed to the airline's record growth. We will also talk about companies' expansion plans. We will delve into how the airline uses data and technology to inform, to make really informed decisions. In this episode, we will also speak about Anthony's journey, his 11 year stint at Jazeera, and get his insights into revenue and pricing. Uh, we will also explore how revenue management has evolved over so many years. Tune in for some interesting discussions as Anthony joins me on the first episode of this podcast. Anthony, welcome to the podcast. How are you today? I'm very good, Vinay. Thank you very much. I mean, it was a pleasure to be the first guest on your podcast. It was really nice. I mean, um, uh, thank you for a wonderful introduction. I think it was uh, amazing. I mean, uh, you just took me back for my journey where I started. Many years. Back, so. Anthony, yeah, do you want okay. to tell us a little more about, uh, about uh, yourself, your professional journey? Um, you know, it, it's so interesting for us to hear about your, your progression, you know, you've been in the industry for over a decade. We'd just love to first uh, know about your journey and your professional experience at uh, Jazeera. I started my career with uh, Kingfisher Airlines and then moved on to Saudi Arabia. I worked for Flyna for a very short period, then moved to Bangladesh. I know uh, even you worked in Bangladesh. So I've worked there for precisely two years in Bangladesh. And then later on in 2012, I joined Jazeera Airways. So in Jazeera Airways, I joined as a pricing and a revenue management specialist. And um, I was handling a couple of routes in the uh, network of Jazeera Airways then. And later on in 2014, uh, I was uh, handed over another responsibility job of uh, doing network planning for the airline. So that was something new for me. I took it as a challenge and uh, I moved on in life. And in 2014, a 17 uh, yeah i was then uh, once we had the new ceo we had changed the entire uh, structure of the airline how the airline need to function I and mean, then we were into more into a point to point airline until then and then we moved we redesigned the whole network to be the hub carrier i mean we we started concentrating on different onds and in 2017, uh, Jazeera started back again operating into the India subcontinent. Yeah. So the first flight we flew in 2017, 17th of November to Hyderabad, followed then by to Cochin in January 2018, then Ahmedabad, then we had Mumbai in 2018, May, and then later on to Delhi. So initially we started with five destinations. Uh, currently now we're operating to eight destinations in India. Oh, that's fantastic. So, yeah, so we have, uh, dr the recent one we added was, uh, the two destinations which we added in this winter 2022 was uh, Bengaluru and Trivandrum, uh, both with weekly two frequencies. So from an analyst, I became a manager at the planning. And then from there, I became a senior manager at the planning. And then um, currently, I'm AVP of handling both revenue management and the plan. So I'm responsible of uh, both the revenue target as well as utilizing the airplanes, whatever we have, 19 airplanes, even though we are small, uh, small in the size, but we make sure that we utilize uh, the fleet uh, very nicely. So that's Talk to me a little thing. more, Anthony, on your European footprint. Where do you currently yes. operate in Europe? So currently, uh, this year, we started uh, operating to Prague and Vienna. These are the two destinations which we uh, started this year. So next year, in 2023, we have, we have plans into launching uh, Munich as well and a couple of destinations uh, in uh, Belgrade. One of them is Belgrade and some other destinations in uh, Europe. We had operations to London Gatwick. But uh, I mean, it was a long term plan of we are operating into London Gatwick, but unfortunately, we were hit by COVID and then uh, we just stopped the operations to London Gatwick. So we will start back London uh, somewhere, not maybe in 2023, but when we have uh, enough number of airplanes, a good connectivity, and everything, we will look, we look into Gatwick. I mean, we ideally want to fly to London Heathrow. So 
that's our main target but yeah i mean since london heathrow is a very busy airport and we don't get the desired slot because everybody is sitting there over the historic slots and nobody is leaving the slots there so it's really difficult to get slots in london heathrow especially when you have a no time in the night you cannot fly the airplane and land in london heathrow during the night because it's curfew so it's closed so we need to f- figure out a way that where we can uh, land during the day and come back which suits our network so that's a, a long term plan which we are looking at but otherwise uh, it's uh, in europe we have uh, many other destinations we are also looking into uh, other parts of europe like tirana we are looking uh, this year next year in 2023 we might also start uh, some uh, one more destination in georgia so it's uh, there is a pipeline which we are planning to uh, because we have new airplanes coming in the new fleet inductions of airplanes are just coming in so it's, it's something which we are really looking at so currently we operate to 53 destinations so in hopefully by end of 2023 we will have at least at least 68 destinations oh well, that's fantastic anthony on a lighter note anthony which is your favorite destination that you would want to operate in europe Oh, one of my favorite i will go back to london heathrow because that's the destination where everybody is eyeing for uh, it's uh, commercially very viable and uh, plus uh, it's a, also a prestige flying to london heathrow we did flights dur- during the covid uh, i mean we did some repatriation flights into london heathrow it was a different experience i mean for everybody i believe so we are really looking uh, very hard into that uh, destination to relaunch it and uh, i'm sure hopefully uh, we will be there very soon and just from a tourism perspective anthony um does it make more uh, viable um sense for you to fly to more european destinations or how do you see it no yes you are absolutely right i mean uh, the more attractive at the moment or this year in particular for us turkey is the number one destination i mean any parts in turkey wow. so we are we we are flying to six destinations in turkey so we fly to istanbul sabiha bodrum antalya trabzon uh, yeah sorry five destinations and we are next year we are planning to increase that to izmir dalmon so a couple of them so, and even maybe bursa so these destinations are very popular for a kuwaiti uh, local locals who are living in kuwait as well as uh, there are a lot of uh, indian subcontinent who wants to yeah. explore turkey so that's another thing which when um, we are also looking into ha- give a good connectivity between all the stations where we operate into india so that we know we can cater to all that plus even georgia tbilisi baku sarajevo so these are all holiday destinations which we are catering into and we will continue exploring new destinations also so we are planning to even look at yerevan we are planning to look uh, we, last year we started salala in muscat uh, so Uh, sorry salala in oman, oman so yeah. the, these are the things yeah these, these are the new destination we're just exploring so it uh, we will be there i'm sure anthony that the air game team somewhere down the line will travel on jazeera and go to one of these fantastic tourist destinations that you're launching flights to we've heard such in great fact, we've heard such yeah. great uh, feedback for your service uh, i'm sure you're going to try it and go to one of these destinations when you launch it anthony you and the team of air gain are most welcome you can always travel with any destinations where we operate to i mean uh, we'll make sure that you you have a very good experience so that you can share that share your experience to other others and we can get more some more customers also that sounds like a generous offer and thank you for that anthony anthony moving on to the year over year performance for jazeera now in terms of revenue um how have you managed such a successful um sort of financial performance year over year i mean post covid we've seen your numbers we've seen the fact that uh you are already exceeding your pre covid numbers the financials look really well uh how have you managed that just take us through you know the thought process the the journey that you guys have been through um over the last couple of years surely i mean um, in jazeera we we keep it very simple we don't uh, reinvent the wheel in fact i mean it's it's a it's a passenger mix and the right yield so what we do is uh, we have historic data we know when is the peak and when is the off peak 
so we exactly know what period we can exactly get the best yields and we go for the yield at that period and during the low season we know that the number passes the numbers which we need to carry and we carry that passenger so because what happens is if you have the right mix of passengers and the, and the right fare so yes. by default your revenues will increase and we also look into different aspects like uh, not only that i mean uh, our you must have definitely seen our pnl by now so the pnl also comes with the cost so we yep. try to keep the cost as much as as low as we can so our unit cost is we will try and reduce it as much as we can but unfortunately this year of course the fuel price everywhere has increased and which is beyond our control but we right. cannot control that but what is in our control we will make sure and ensure that to get the maximum out of it so it's basically a right mix between the passenger and the uh, fare uh, average fare so that's how we get to that uh, better profit margin profitability that's yes, fantastic that's correct. also anthony talk to us about um, so there is there is a huge amount of success that jazeera's got with 19 aircrafts um and as you grow and as you induct more aircrafts into your fleet uh, we hear that by 2026 you'll have 35 uh, uh, aircrafts in your fleet uh, talk us through that talk talk us through the thinking at jazeera you know as a network planner and as a revenue optimization um, a person how do you see that evolving uh, we we realize that you will go grow um, many folds in the coming years but just from a short term and a longish term view how do you see jazeera in terms of fleet size in terms of operation and how do you drive those efficiencies within the airline company yeah so what's happening is i mean we know there is a potential in kuwait i mean and the our because since we have created a hub in kuwait now so we know the data where we can uh, fly to and what is the radius of a 320 neo or a 3 321s also which we have already in plan of buying them later on uh, in 2025 and 2026 but so what we want to do is we want to explore all the points within the gcc or wherever a 320 neo can reach within our right. reach and if there is an and if there is an uh, uh, availability for us to enter that market and gain the market share plus make money we will definitely not leave that uh, leave that market we will yes. fly there yeah we will fly that route and we will explore more opportunities also because we are now looking not only looking at uh, only point to point traffic but we are also looking at a beyond tra- traffic which we will be doing it so so basically we we have realized that you know we, if we have to grow and if we need to uh, be on par or with competing with the other airlines in the gcc we need to explore new markets and we need yeah. to uh, enter that market and we see what is our potential what we can get from that market and uh, so far we have uh, uh, that should we have been good in what destinations we have been flying because we do a lot of uh, background study of the route we see what cost it is and we we negotiate we try and see what best we can get from the airport from their marketing team and from everybody So and we, just from a new order basic, perspective, Anthony, you know, just just uh, on the aircraft orders for Jazeera, is there an order book which sort of extends into twenty thirty? Uh, what are the induction plans for Jazeera? So at the moment we're concentrating until twenty twenty six. Of course, yes, we have plans uh, which is until twenty thirty and beyond. But uh, for us, the major concentration what we're looking is until twenty twenty five and twenty twenty six because. there are a lot of behind the scenes which we need to do because uh, infrastructure is the one which we are also looking at we just don't want to because at the end we want every customer who is in with jazeera airways to have a comfort free uh, i mean comf- they should fly with us in a comfort zone we don't want them to have an uh, any kind of congestion or something so exactly so because that's a very important thing even we are looking at because Uh, we need to have a bigger terminal and uh, because currently when you're talking about 30 airplanes or 35 airplanes so the passenger numbers currently we are almost uh, sitting in 2022 will end up with almost 3.6 million passengers carried in 2022 
with 19 airplanes. So when you go in 2030, this will be definitely doubled. So yeah, you'll have absolutely. more connectivity. There will be a passenger flow and everything. So, so that's where also we'll. It's it's not easy to get everything done. Yes, of course you can get an airplane, but you, you can't build an a uh, terminal within uh, two three months so that's two, three what months so, so we, we are uh, we are very cautious in what we are planning and what we are doing and uh, so there's a roadmap how we are doing it and how what, what's what's going what's going to happen in the next couple of years and that's to my earlier question uh, just which second. you answered so well anthony that you know oh. we we really hope that we can absolutely travel on jazeera and feel the difference in the service and I think by another couple of years, uh, Anthony, you will be a true network carrier, um, you know, moving away from the point to point traffic, getting more into the ONDs, which give you more network traffic. So congratulations on that. Anthony, tell us about the choice of aircrafts that Jazeera has made. I believe you have an all Airbus fleet. Uh, talk us through that. Uh, and how do you drive operational efficiencies having one, uh, one aircraft type uh, in the Jazeera network. So, uh, when I, uh, why did we choose Airbus 320? Is because uh, see, we want to keep our. I told you in in the beginning, we are we all when we look at the revenue side, we also look at the cost side. So, the minute you have a mixed fleet, which is a Boeing and uh, Airbus, your cost of maintenance will shoot up because you need to have all maintenance uh, regarding Boeing as well as Airbus. So. We have selected Airbus 320 Neo because currently we were operating with the Airbus 320 CEOs, and recently we have moved into the new generation of 320 Neos, which will give us 15% of fuel efficiency, and they are much. Sl- uh, there is no noise when you fly in those airplanes, so it's a yeah. comfort uh, for a passenger side. It's a much comfort zone when they operate when they fly with the uh, 320 Neos, and plus you you will save a lot of money on fuel 15 percent fuel efficiency is something which is everybody will look into that and that's where we have we have gone ahead with the 320 uh, neos and talk to me about configuration of the aircrafts anthony is it single um i know they're single aisle aircrafts but talk to me yeah. about is there standard configuration on all jazeera aircrafts uh so currently in all of our 320 neo aircraft which we have 11 of them so they are all at 174 feet, and all the 320 CEOs are at 168 feet. So, uh, 2023, we are going to change the 320 CEOs seatings to 174, so that all the whole fleet will be 174 seats right across the uh, fleet. So there will be no mix max of uh, fleet uh, seat capacity because. Currently, it becomes it becomes a little hectic to manage because you don't know which airplane goes to which destination, and then uh, because the tail assignment is done uh, last minute, and in case if there is an uh, AOG, it becomes really difficult. So yes. it's, it's a little yes. bit of challenge. But once you have your seat configuration at the same pace with 174, then there should not be any issues. That's great news, um, Anthony, because, you know, standard aircraft with a standard configuration is absolutely great to drive efficiencies in the airline business. Absolutely. You and I, Anthony, we've been around the commercial aviation and travel business for a while. Um, speak to me a little bit about your, um, I mean, the changes that you've seen in the revenue management space and the pricing space and also in the network planning space. Because I see that, you know, there are new strategies which come in. And I also see that post-pandemic, uh, there's a lot of new routes that airlines are evaluating. Uh, talk to me about that. Talk to me about changes that you've seen um, in revenue management for the last so many years. Yeah. So uh, if I compare, I mean, uh, what when I started my career in 2005, I mean, I worked with a full service of career where there was free food, free baggage, everything free. You just pay amount and everything will be taken care yeah. if you're flying in the morning you used to get a hot breakfast uh, hot food served if you're flying in the afternoon you get your lunch if you're flying in the night you get your dinner and that was something awesome i mean yeah, we love everybody that, used to we? love that everybody loved that i mean uh, i know the, the kingfisher was serving some uh, they have even served lobsters on the long haul flight so that's something which was good but as the years passed i mean uh, travel then in 2005 I'm talking about in India, 
it and i'm sure even in this part it was luxury i mean today if i compare that i think it is necessity because people value time more they don't travel anymore in trains or buses where they spend hours on the road or in the train or something there are different types of people who fly with you now yeah. there are people who 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 can afford to spend in the same airplane and there are people who they just want to go point a point b they don't want to have luggage they don't want to eat anything they are fine with that so i think these airlines who are catering to this kind of traffic are the more successful ones rather than the full service because in full service but you don't have a choice whether you like it or you don't like it by default you will be getting a breakfast or lunch but in the lccs you can select what you want i mean for example in jazira we 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 have light value and extra we have a fair family called light value and extra so if you are if you select and if you want to say i want to go from point a to point b i just want to carry hand baggage i don't need 30 kilos of luggage i didn't don't need my food i'm fine you just pay and you go i mean then extra ancillary revenues is the one which is you know really come into play now i mean everybody is concentrating in ancillary revenue that is a key i think uh, for an airline's pnl because that is where you without a cost by default a passenger is flying with you you need to just add a couple of things for example uh, he buys meals on board he fees by the seat selection and all that so priority boarding we have all these different things so these are something new which i've seen over a decade from what i had seen earlier because uh, back then in kingfisher if you are a kingfisher first passenger uh, and we used to not call it as business class but we used to call it as kingfisher first so you used to get a red carpet in the airport yeah. there was a guy who used to come and take your bag from your hand and then go so all that is fancy you know tailor made things but that was good then but i don't think so now uh, nobody bothers that i mean you can just go to the airport and take your own time and then you want that service no problem you can avail that service but uh, whatever service you want there is a charge for it i was saying i was used to work for the competition so i exactly know what red red carpet service meant but exactly. uh, you're absolutely right i think the way the industry is evolved is uh, there's been a lot of unmundling of fares uh every right. element of pricing today commands a price uh every element of um, service that you require uh, you can choose um yeah. back in the day a few years ago you know you had you, i mean airlines did not concentrate on ancillary as a real revenue source but i think um, that's all of that has changed because revenue exactly. from ancillary today uh, contribute in double digits to most airlines which is just absolutely fantastic to know because the because nowadays there are lots absolutely i mean there are the e-commerce has come into play majorly there is something even there people make money so there are a couple of things i mean um, which i've seen which we need to still explore that how you can because uh, for example if the passenger is flying with you anyways you're carrying that carrying a passenger in yes. the airplane sure. if that passenger can give you something more for some other benefits like for example he is using uh, something called as a priority boarding so we have that something priority boarding you don't need to come and stand in a line we have a common desk where you go there and you stand but there is a cost for it so you pay that and you get you the pay that cost exactly um, so anthony i want to i want to speak to you um, a little more about the pricing intelligence solutions i think um, what i hear from the industry and when we speak to a lot of airlines um, we talk about dynamic pricing these days um, right. tell us tell us at jazira how do you view dynamic pricing is it a part of your pricing strategy and do you see that in the foreseeable future will you go down the dynamic pricing route yeah it is it is because uh, at the moment i mean uh, prices change very dynamically i mean it's like i mean you see a price in the morning and suddenly the prices change so the competition reacts and uh, if we have to be in the game i think uh, we need to be it's very important for us also to monitor what the competition is doing and you know you need to change your fares very frequently so you cannot hold and say you know i'm not going to it cannot be an adamant guy and say i'm not going to hold my price unless and until you are 100% sure i mean if there is enough demand and your historic data definitely says 
you don't need to react then you can leave it or ignore it but majority of the time looking at the market condition because at the moment there are a lot of uh, options available for passengers to travel uh, anywhere so if you are not competitive enough uh, you might lose that passenger so and losing a passenger means getting back the same passenger with your airline it really becomes difficult so uh, we normally not try not lose the passenger so that helps your product what we have recently signed up this year so which gives us a clarity on how other airlines are doing what are their strategy and how things are moving and what is the competition doing how is the market reacting to certain changes so uh, it's it's a helpful thing i mean it it has to be there so dynamic like dynamic pricing i think is very important it will play a major role in coming years um you know let's talk anthony a little more about <clears throat> the kind of informed decisions you are making on the pricing side as you mentioned that of course dynamic pricing is something which jazeera will adopt to maybe in the near future but currently in terms of looking at you know your your forecast looking at how you match your uh, year over years month over months to accurately predict uh, demand for jazeera how does that process look like for you right now so uh, it's there are two ways of doing it i mean one is your market intelligence what we get from uh, the feedback from the market like of course uh, i mean uh, every airline has a historic data i mean if the airline is uh, yep. started to operating for at least say 10 years you have good data with you and you know when is your peak and when is your off peak but you might be wrong at times because uh, you never know then when when you compare the data historically there were not much competition in that particular route for example and currently you have some new entrant who has just joined the airline uh, so just joined the route by default uh, there will be dilution of passengers from you i mean the market share might just slip so what we do is we study the market and we see how in case we know for example there is a new route which has just come for example if i give an example uh, which has started abu dhabi kuwait yeah. they they are really their prices are way too low compared to our pricing now is it a threat the question is yes it is how do we react at the moment yes we watch them because that pricing what they are offering is difficult we will not match it but if it starts hurting us then we need to react so the, the another option is okay fine if you are flying if if wizard is entered into the new market we change the ond i mean instead of carrying a passenger from say kuwait to dubai or something we'll try and uh, look into a different ond for example i might fly from a uh, different part of the world for example i might uh, create a new ond change my timing so that you know i if i see a traffic flow between the two onds is very high yeah. and there is less competition i will change that so that i will maintain my load factor as well as i'll maintain my yield because at any given point i just cannot sit back and relax and say okay there's a new airline i can't do much i cannot i will not do anything but that's not going to work out so i i need to my job is to figure out a way how we can sustain in the market and then you know keep the load factor healthy in the route so that's very important i mean maintaining the healthy load factor at a break even price is really important and anthony you know just from your from your team at jazeera i'm sure that when you started back in the day um the kind of tools we had versus the tools we have right now um and i'm sure your your teams also adapted to the change because you know anybody coming into the new revenue management system or anybody who's joining the you know larger airline ecosystem they are coming into this this host of technology um which they are trying to sort of um you know get on board implement and learn how's that change for the team at jazeera so uh you're right when i mean as the days and as the years pass i mean technology is one thing which every airline will be looking at it because nowadays you have so many options of getting uh, things like uh, you have a group tool you have revenue management systems coming in you have ond data that you can cater to so many things and everything 
and then uh, there are different other parts where you know uh, uh, i told you about e-commerce uh, yeah. mark- digital marketing that's another thing which is just coming up and it's already there but in couple of years from now i think it will go to the next level so so we are all working into that of course i mean it's difficult to adapt and get the change because when you compare 10 years back we were nowhere there and then suddenly yeah. with the new technology when the, with the new people the new generation comes into the place, new so terminology and uh, absolutely so they are all into the new tech guys i mean i always yes. call them I and mean, say you, you you guys are the ones who needs to teach us because i'm not aware of these things so it it happens i mean we learn so there are uh, things which i do learn from my juniors where they are very good at because they are all these tech guys they know what needs to be done and yeah. changing data and all that so so anthony tell us a little more about your favorite destinations your fun destinations that you travel to you know what's the plan um, for this upcoming year so you you mean my personal uh, holiday yes your personal favorite destinations uh-huh. anthony so next year uh, i mean i want to go to probably uh, somewhere in march i'm planning to go to maldives wow and, uh, with my family and then um, and then explore some new destinations when in jazira network so that's something which which is there in my pipeline at the moment i've not planned anything for 2023 but since in the first quarter i want to take a break when my kids are having the school break so probably maldives is the one which i would like to go Oh, that's apart fantastic. That, I think, uh, yeah, apart from that, I'm sure I will fly somewhere in June for a week's break. Somewhere, I don't know which parts because I've not even thought about it. So, no idea. <laughs> well, Maldives is on my bucket list as well, Anthony. You know, we've always planned, but we've never gone. So, I think exactly. it's a good idea to plan Maldives maybe in March or April before it gets too hot, right? Yeah, the another thing is I mean I don't have much of a choice when I want to because uh, I can only go on holidays when my kids are having leave so that's <laughs> another thing I have to schedule uh, the holiday pattern accordingly accordingly uh, yeah so uh, yeah I was uh, on a small short break this uh, last week I was in Dubai for a week I just took the family just chilled out and came back so that is uh, next door so you can just go to dubai anytime when you oh, want oh yeah, yeah for sure i mean where your so, base is absolutely close and you can just exactly it's so just a one and a half hour flight yeah one and a half hour flight just go there and visas nowadays is not an issue at all in dubai you can just apply online and if you have a us visa then you get visa on arrival so it's uh, still more better so i have absolutely. that opportunity if i can just decide take my passport and go and so that, that's something which is you know when you have these visas uh, us visas you can get uh, on arrival visa for some yeah. countries the third is one of them you just need an e visa electronic visa so uh, yeah i mean uh, that's something which uh, well, that's fun to know anthony i think uh, uh, a break to the maldives is something that i think all of us look forward to anthony tell us if somebody at this moment wants to enter the airline industry um what are the avenues what do you recommend uh for for uh, people who really want to be in commercial aviation yeah first and foremost uh, when i i think uh, the individual who wants to join the airline uh, it should not be by force it should be by passion i mean if you have the passion i think you are in the right business if you don't if you're not in the right passion then it becomes difficult for example if i talk about myself uh, when i was in my college or when i was looking at the airplane just flying so i always wanted to be working to one of the airlines in india and uh, from my hometown when i moved out to mumbai i got an opportunity to work uh, with kingfish airlines i just started my career with call center because i was just a layman i didn't know anything about aviation zero background i just graduated i just entered into aviation it felt wow something is nice and then from there i mean because aviation is vast it's big it's huge so the person whoever wants to come into revenue management you need to understand how aviation or how revenue management or i would rather put not revenue management i would put commercial works because yeah. if a person knows how the commercial works then he can either choose within the commercial team he can go into sales if he's good at sales he can select if it is good you know i don't want to be in the field i would rather manage the sales let someone else do the job for me let them go and get the business for me 
i will manage what business i need to take and what business i can afford to lose so that decision can be taken then or even marketing because these are the three critical areas in commercial where you know you you want to uh, get into but especially if you ask me about revenue management i think number one is passion number two is intellectual you need to know the numbers right you need to understand the different businesses what you want and what you can let go because that leaving business is also very important in revenue management it may not be right in sales because sales job is to get whatever they can you just bring it that's their job and that's that they are meant to be but revenue management is to select what the sales person has got into the company whether is this the right mix for me is it right business for me for this month or you know i can just say i don't want this business this month you can come next month where i feel my flights are going to light i don't have a problem but that getting into revenue management is you know it's more about passion and about numbers so if you are very good if anybody is very good in numbers i think uh, he or she should uh, definitely look into revenue management so, so passion I, I, number I mean, 1 anthony like you said passion number 1 uh, analytical bent of mind is very important what you mentioned as well yes. so and passion uh, and a passion for numbers if you want to be in revenue management uh, passion for the airlines and passion for sales and marketing if you want to be on the commercial side of uh, the airline business that's just because uh, it's to be the right revenue or the 100% thorough revenue management guy i think it's very important to know how a commercial team works like the sales and the marketing i mean oh yes for sure if, if you really need to know how how the revenue management i mean you can go to the next level of revenue management only when you know how the commercial commercially it is run like the sales marketing when you need to give uh discounts or when you need to put an ad to speak to marketing team i mean it's basically another thing is talk to a lot of people i mean within the team and even oh, yes. outside it. I mean, it's basically it's an interaction between sales commercial sales marketing and revenue management so if you have if if that's the right thing i think uh, uh, then the decision is on the person whether he wants to get into sales or revenue management but especially revenue management it's passion and number crunching and intellectual thinking so these yeah. three things i would i would sense. also add anthony because you know both of us have a background from the airline i i would also say that within the airline um you have to be a very good collaborator because right. i think that you know you don't don't really necessarily win a customer at the airline if you're not really in sync with other units within the airline you know it could be sales or revenue management or in flight or guest experience or the whole customer journey itself i think you have to be a good collaborator within the airline to make sure that you have the right customer you have the right experience you have the right price but at the same time the customer leaves with a feeling of being wanted a feeling of you know having the experience of the expectations that they had for that particular airline so i think all those attributes are very very important and Absolutely. i'm sure there are young viewers to our podcast who will take your advice and those of who are those of them who are passionate about the airline industry uh, maybe we'll you know help some of the youngsters um you know take up take up a, a assignment within the airline industry anthony uh, jazira and airkin have been partners for a while now uh just walk us through the kind of problems that we've been able to resolve uh for jazira uh so first of all i mean uh, it was uh, i think it was a good collaboration we had uh, six seven months back uh, we are actually benefiting out of the uh collaboration what we had earlier so what we have felt is or what we have seen is after we got involved with air game so our pricing team or the route controller route owners are much more comfortable with the data what has been provided because we have cross checked the data whether it is accurate and everything it's a part of our job because we also go and search uh, websites of different airlines just to see if this data is right or wrong and uh, it has been up, i would say it's been almost there i mean there in the sense basically i mean you know it's dynamic I an mean, air game picks up the data in the morning so by the time it when it comes uh, it might when we actually check the data live 
after a couple of hours it might change but i think the data is accurate plus not only that i mean we have different wide range of options i mean i can run reports in air game i get alerts in air game which you know i don't need to get inside the system and check i have to just uh, you know take an uh, uh, email inbox there's an email which pops up and then it says okay these are the flights which are uh because there are a lot of back and forth which we have done I and mean, with your help with the help of your team we have set uh, rules so that there are alerts which comes and you know it's an uh, if there is any flight for example if we are higher than way higher than the competition for after the next say d minus 30 okay it will highlight us and it's an indication to us that you know it please go into that flight and adjust the flight accordingly so that's number one number two is uh, well with with the with the air game coming into uh, the picture with us so what has helped us is we have uh, as i told you we are now we are going into different ond's origin destination pricing so that gives us a lot of search options for different because it's very difficult to you know sit and search in a website for a different airline so it's very easy now you just need to spend maybe 15 20 minutes set up a rule what you need to search and you just run it every day or you want every 3 days you can time the reports what you want so everything can be done and you know you don't need to wait for a report to come by the time the staff is in the office the reports are run you just open it and just search and see what needs to be done so the another thing is i mean uh, which we will initially look into that is uh, in we need to have some kind of an interaction between air game and our revenue management system so you know in one screen uh, if our analyst can see both it together so that's something which we will look into that option uh, i mean we are also in talk with the revenue management system how we can do that it is possible i'm not saying it is not possible nowadays with it i think everything is possible we can do anything with uh, with the help of information technology what we have so uh, it has really helped us i mean we had uh, so i would also like to thank you for the, being a partner with us because uh, whatever the success story of jazira is uh, you have been a partner with us because i believe uh, without your support or without anybody's all the partners what we have in jazira they have supported us so to be one of the profitable airline in the for this year and moving forward definitely Anthony, thank you for that. Uh, I want to hear from you. How do you see the airline industry evolving in the next uh, couple of years? How do you see 2023? How do you see 2024 for uh, Jazeera and also for the whole airline industry? Uh, yeah, I think the whole aviation. Uh, I think everybody are uh, mostly worried about the fuel price. Uh, slowly, the Brent is coming down, but um, uh, there is a big question mark of how. how much it will go down so that's the big worry where everybody is concerned and uh, i think each airline uh, will look into that very closely because uh, there is nothing much uh, we can do uh, as an as an, uh, as an airline. airline as an airline we can't do anything which is controlled by the market so that's the big concern so everybody needs to be a little i think more not everybody every airline who is operating i think will be definitely concerned on the cost side or the fuel prices apart from the fuel price i think uh, the market is just growing i think in a couple of years uh, this industry will be definitely going to the next level because the amount of new airlines are coming and especially after the post covid i think everybody has realized that uh, time is value so nobody oh, yes. wants to lose any time because that's what we have learned i mean if you have time you can do wonders so they will fly rather than take any other option and plus travel has become uh, so cheap because of the more competition in the uh, what we have around the world i mean anywhere you go there's a huge capacity deployed huge especially after covid i think all the countries have come back to the pre covid levels of flying i mean especially if you consider india they have surplused uh, the pre covid levels long back so new airlines coming in more opportunities for the passengers to take a choice of which airline to fly and which not to fly 
so pricing also will take will also be another big uh, issue because you may not get the price which you are looking at as an airline but of course your yes, passenger might be very happy from a passenger point of view he might have a lot of choices to fly with which airline because as far as he is getting a cheaper price he will fly but i think even time i mean if you have a right timing departure timing in a particular destination and compared to any other competition you can still demand the price i mean that's that's what i believe well said anthony well said anthony over the peak summer months this year we've seen a lot a lot of staff shortages at various airports um, how do you think that new talent is being attracted to the industry which can then fill in that hole in the longer term yeah i think uh, the covid where uh, due due to covid situation i think most of the airlines let go people and uh, you know because of the no flights and everything but uh, i think everybody misjudged it uh, what is going to happen post covid i mean the industry will it come back to normal there's a big hustle in the industry whether we will come back to normal or you know whether there will be still restrictions because these the things we couldn't take a call as an airline because we were all depending on the different countries because different countries has different protocols to follow sure. and based on that so the, the decisions are pending people were not hired back and everything but we have seen a major thing what happened in the europe uh, i mean there was a lot of lack of manpower and the flights get delayed flights are cancelled fully booked flights getting cancelled because of uh, lack of manpower and uh, you cannot uh, extend the same person doing the same duty for the next 12 hours or getting doing an overtime every single day so i think it is a food for thought where you know for the new people whoever is thinking to join the aviation that's the right industry to join because if you are enthusiastic to be uh, to be in the aviation industry i think that's fantastic i mean uh, the aviation industry is very huge very vast big and uh, there are benefits when you work for an aviation so uh, think about it uh, it will happen one day you will you will definitely uh, realize sit back and relax and think yeah i mean probably taking a decision to work in the aviation worked out so it is nothing wrong in working for an aviation i think uh, people who are who want to be who are more into flying or more uh, who, are, who wants to explore things uh, around the world should join aviation if they are uh, really enthusiastic in the aviation industry thanks for the word of encouragement to all the newcomers to the industry anthony very very happy to partner with jazira in this journey very happy to collaborate on new customization is very happy to solve use cases for jazira and we wish you all the best um thank you very much thank you so much thank you very much anthony for your participation uh, just for our podcast viewers we are speaking to anthony oliver fernandez who is the avp at jazira uh such a great chat thank you anthony for all your insights thank you for being a part of the podcast and we thank look you. forward to collaborating with you in future as well.